This is Canada. And Canada has many iconic buildings all throughout the country, such as CN Tower, the West Edmonton Mall, Canada Place, Habitat 67, Harbor Centre, Chateau Frontenac, and of course, Parliament Hill. And today we're going to look at more iconic buildings in Canada, except we're going to look at the tallest buildings in each province and or territory, from the least high tallest building to the highest. And each building is going to be counted from ground level all the way to the top, whether that's a spire or an antenna. So without further ado, grab yourself a plate of poutine and let's begin. Our tallest buildings in Canada by province and territory. Number 13, the least high, tallest building by province in Canada is in Whitehorse. And being in the Yukon Territory, you are pretty isolated from the rest of the world. And that's how most residents like it. No matter which direction you drive into Whitehorse, it's going to be a long drive. And depending on the route, you might have to take a ferry. Ma's Point was made to bring modern condo amenities to the Great White North. All space is used for condos except for on the ground floor where there are commercial spaces available. And it appears that rooms that haven't been sold are being used as hotel rooms for people visiting the area. The structure is made of steel, and upon completion, this building cost $18 million to build. It is located on 2nd and Jarvis, and has an underground parking garage that's heated. Ma's Point was made to be 66 feet tall. At the time, the city of Whitehorse only allowed buildings to be 66 feet. So, it was going to be the tallest building allowed. But in 2012, the city then moved the height limit to 82 feet. As of 2020, Ma's Point is currently the tallest building in Whitehorse. But maybe not for long. You see, the developers are working on Ma's Point 2. MP2, as I like to say, is taller. But in 2018, the city ordered a stop order on all construction. This was due to different violations and the lack of permits by the developer. So that means, as of now... Ma's Point, this six-story behemoth, remains the tallest building in the Yukon Territory. Number 12, Turkturjuk Tower. In Iqaluit, Nunavut, Turkturjuk Tower is a residential building within the larger structure of the Astro Hill Complex. In that complex is the W.G. Brown Building, the Frobisher Hotel, and two apartment buildings. Of course, the tallest is Turkturjuk Tower at eight floors. Also in the complex is a shopping center, as they call it, and city and government services. There's even a movie theater. The building was completed in 1976 and was made to allow residents to have a more modern place to live. It provided amenities that weren't currently available at a large scale in this remote community. To this day, it remains as Nunavut's largest and tallest building. There's actually a lot of unique buildings in Iqaluit, but we're only here to check out the tallest. Next one. Number 11. At 197 feet tall, we have Northern Heights in Yellowknife. Somehow, there's conflicting reports of when this building was actually completed. Some say 1996, and some say 1989, and I'm willing to go with the latter. Nonetheless, there are 17 floors with condos and apartments. The average room size is 887 square feet. And currently, the building is known for having more amenities than any other building in Yellowknife. And that includes a fitness room, an activity room, and kind of a dingy looking squash court. As well as an unfinished looking terrace. But don't worry, you won't get much use there because it's so cold all the time. Underneath Northern Heights is the Center Square Mall. Once the humming hub of activity in Yellowknife, it's now a dead mall. There have also been reports of some less than stellar upkeep. And there you have it, Northern Heights, the tallest building in the Northwest Territories. But before we go, can we appreciate Yellowknife's skyline? I mean, this is a city of less than 20,000 people. 
And next we had the Canada's smallest province, Prince Edward Island, to see their tallest building. And that tallest building is located in the province's capital, Charlottetown, with a population of less than 40,000. And also the birthplace of Canada's confederation. You won't find any high-rises here. In fact, the tallest building is a cathedral. St. Dunstan's Basilica stands at 203 feet tall. The building was started in 1896 and was completed in 1907. Unfortunately, a horrific fire in 1913 destroyed the building, but they quickly rebuilt. By 1916, its stone structure was reconstructed, and by 1919, the building was completely done, with both towers looming over the small town. The Pope even honored this building by giving it the title of Basilica, one of only 20 in Canada. Thankfully, in 1990, the Basilica was designated a National Historic Site of Canada, so it is always protected. This wonderful example of Gothic architecture is still used, and it's currently the home of the Diocese of Charlottetown. And in case you're curious, the next tallest building in Prince Edward Island is the Holman Grand Hotel, also located in Charlottetown. It's 127 feet tall, 10 floors, and was completed in 2011. The next tallest building by province is in Newfoundland and Labrador, in the city of St. John's. There's actually a good collection of mid-rise buildings in this city of about 110,000, but the tallest is the Confederation Building on Confederation Hill. Completed in 1960 at a price tag of $9 million, the building is 210 feet tall, with 11 floors. It's the Capitol building, so all the provincial government is in it and the complex around it. When it was originally built, there was nothing around it on Confederation Hill. Now, the city has built itself around it. Still, no other building has topped it in the city of St. John's. And I guess only time will tell to see if it remains the tallest building in Newfoundland and Labrador. Number 8, we head to New Brunswick, where we got ourselves a tie, and a technicality. You see, the tallest structure is Bell Alliant Tower. It's 417 feet tall, 127 meters, and it was built in 1971. It's a broadcast tower, but that's the problem. It's a broadcast tower. It's not a building that anybody can go in and live in, or do anything. All it does is redirect radio waves, which I guess is very important. So while it is the tallest freestanding structure in Atlantic Canada, we're actually going to have a different building on the list. Two different buildings as the tallest buildings in New Brunswick. Both buildings are 265 feet tall, exactly the same height, but one is in Moncton and the other is in St. John. We'll start in Moncton with Assumption Place. It has more floors than any other building in the province. 20. The building was completed in 1972 and is currently owned by Assumption Life, a life insurance company. We then head over to St. John, to Brunswick Square. To most locals, when you say Brunswick Square, they'll think of the shopping mall. But attached to that shopping mall is Brunswick Square, the tower, which was completed in 1980. Brunswick Square also holds the record for being the largest office building in the province by floor space. There are 19 floors for offices. So there you go. Those are the tallest buildings in New Brunswick, and also the tallest buildings in Atlantic Canada. For number 8, we head out to the prairies, to Regina, the capital of Saskatchewan, where the tallest building was commissioned by the Mosaic Company as their headquarters. One of the top companies in the world for mining phosphates, potash, and making fertilizer. Mosaic Potash Hill Center Tower 3 was completed in 2013 and barely stands as the tallest building in Saskatchewan. It's 18 stories and has 240,000 square feet of office space. It was also certified as lead silver. The architects say the building is a respectful addition to the skyline-defining symmetry of the Twin Towers next door. And they're right, it definitely doesn't stand out Especially amongst the whole skyline, it's pretty even. But we'll see how in the coming years, Regina's skyline may change. But as of now, Mosaic Potash Tower is the tallest building in Saskatchewan. But wait, not for long. You see, over in Saskatoon, they're currently building a new tower called Nutrien Tower. It will be 288 feet tall and 20 floors. It'll be the tallest building in Saskatoon and the tallest building in Saskatchewan. 
In Nova Scotia, in the city of Halifax, the tallest building is Fenwick Place, known locally as Fenwick Tower. But this tallest building isn't located in downtown Halifax. Instead, it's located at the city's south end. When the building was originally completed in 1971, it was touted as the tallest residential building east of Toronto. But residents were quick to point out that the apartments were missing heating, windows, and other furnishings and amenities. There was a lot of issues early on. The building also suffered damage from hurricanes multiple times, shattered windows, walls collapsing, even 16 feet of water in the elevator shafts. As the years went on, the building continued to deteriorate. Finally, new owners came along, and in the late 2010s, they decided it was time to renovate. And with that renovation came a huge price increase in rent. So as it currently stands, the building has 33 different floors. Floor 13 isn't marked, and there's also a secret floor between 15 and 16 that also isn't marked and can't be accessed by the main elevators. So there you have it, the tallest building in Nova Scotia. Next, at number 5, we head to Manitoba and its capital city, Winnipeg. And winning just by a little bit is 201 Portage at 420 feet and 33 floors. Across the street is the second tallest building at 407 feet, the Richardson Building, but it has 34 floors, one more than 201 Portage, but it's still shorter in height. 201 Portage was originally announced in 1987. It cost $38 million to build and was completed in 1990. A smaller twin tower of 201 Portage was originally planned to be built, but it never happened. Upon completion of the building, it has remained the tallest building in Manitoba and the tallest building between Toronto and Calgary. We head out west to number four in British Columbia. Fun fact, of the 10 tallest buildings in British Columbia, only three are in Vancouver. The rest are in Burnaby and Surrey, and Burnaby's catching up real fast. The majority are in Burnaby. But the tallest building in British Columbia is Living Shangri-La, at 659 feet with 62 floors and completed in 2008 at a cost of $350 million. It is a mix of five-star luxury hotel, offices, apartments, and condos. Strangely enough, there's no fourth floor. There's also no 13th floor. In a city that is an endless sea of samey looking condominiums and apartment buildings, living Shangri-La does stand out, but mainly just because of its height. But the question remains, for how long, and how long will it remain the tallest building in British Columbia? You doing all right? You hanging in there? We're at number three, we're almost done. Not only is 1250 Rennie Levesque the tallest building in Quebec, it's also possibly the most controversially named building in Canada. You see, the building was named after Canadian politician René Levesque, who promoted to have Quebec become its own sovereign state. He did so as the founder of the Parti Québécois and rallied French Canadians together for Quebec independence. Depending on what part of the country you come from, that's either a good or a bad thing. But no matter what, it's still a touchy issue in Canada. But yeah, back to the building. 1250 René Levesque was finished in 1992 and stands at 741 feet tall, 226 meters, and has 47 floors. As of 2020, it has several different tenants such as Bayer, Air Liquid Canada, Deutsche Bank, Merrill Lynch Canada, and Wells Fargo, not to mention many more. Stantec Tower in Edmonton, Alberta is a $600 million tower finished in 2019. It's one of those skyline-altering buildings. It's iconic, and it stands out. In 2014, the original design was released, and back then, it was only going to be 62 floors and 735 feet. But that, of course, changed. Construction started in the fall of 2014, and it was being built up at the exact same time as the JW Marriott Edmonton right next door. In just 14 days, Stantec reached its 30th floor. So while JW Marriott just received the title as the tallest building in Edmonton, Stantec kept moving on and then passed it and became the new tallest building in Edmonton. The building is residential and commercial with office spaces inside. Unfortunately, due to low sales of the residential space in the building, a lot of it had to be converted over to hotel space. We'll see if the building's occupancy continues to fill up. Otherwise, this building boom might become a building bust in Edmonton. Okay, okay, okay. You're all expecting to see CN Tower here, but it's not. So yes, at 1,815 feet tall, 
CN Tower is the tallest structure in North America. According to the Canadian government and architectural experts, CN Tower is technically not a building. It is a structure, specifically a communications tower. That means it is distinguished from buildings in that it's not meant to be habitable or serve any other functions. In this case, though, it is a communications tower. Whew, boy, I bet you didn't expect a curveball like this. So what is the tallest building in Canada? Ta-da! First Canadian place. At 978 feet tall and 72 floors, it was completed on June 5th, 1975. But it almost didn't happen. In the early 1970s, the mayor did not want this building built. As a matter of fact, he even banned skyscrapers being built in Toronto. It took years of lobbying, and then finally, they got permission to do it. Upon its completion, it was compared to Aeon Center in Chicago, Illinois, as being virtually identical. Aeon Center was completed two years previous. First Canadian Place used the same floor plan and the same marble cladding on the outside. The only visible exterior difference was that First Canadian Place had horizontal windows, while Aeon Center had vertical windows. In 2009, the building's owners again followed in the footsteps of Aeon Center and said that they would replace the tower's 45,000 marble panels with new ones in glass, as well as white ceramic and bronze tint. After over $100 million spent, it was finally completed in 2012. The building is an office building, but it also has radio transmitters on the top and a shopping mall on the ground floors. But after decades of dominance, one Canadian place's time at the top is nearing its end. Because a new tower called The One will take top spot. It will rise 1,007 feet high and have 85 floors. It will be Canada's first super tall skyscraper. It broke ground in 2017, but so far has seen nothing but trouble. First, there were financial issues, but those were solved in 2019. Even worse, in December of 2019, the City of Toronto ordered a stop work order, saying that the site had repeated violations and that they were no longer allowed to build. As of mid-2020, there's still been no new construction. The building was supposed to be completed in 2020. Now it's maybe not until 2022, maybe 2023. But that can't take away the honor that the tallest building in Ontario and the tallest building in Canada belongs to First Canadian Place at 978 feet tall. And there you go, the tallest buildings in Canada ranked by province and or territory. We went from the smallest tallest to the tallest tallest. If you had a favorite building, post it down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day. Besides, I'm out of poutine. <laughs>